In my ongoing rant about sexy body parts that we don't give enough credit to, I want to talk about shoulders. We erroneously lump them into the block of the torso, but they're this totally separate floating mass that moves in this really creepy, alien way. Also, we're so obsessed with how the spine shows emotional status that we never even talk about how the shoulder girdle makes up most of that gesture. First, let me freak out a little bit about how mobile the shoulders are in relation to the rest of the torso. The entire structure of the shoulder, and by extension the whole arm, is only attached to the rest of your skeleton by the collarbone at the top of the sternum. Feel it with your hand right now at the base of your neck. This little nub. This one right here, that's all your arm gets. It's otherwise entirely floating, free as a bird. This freedom that the shoulder has from the rest of your torso is what allows Taylor Swift to do this, and how Asadata Defora choreographed shit like this. And if you don't think shoulders are the sexiest body part of all body parts yet, just watch this clip again. My basic approach is to see the rib cage as an oval, much narrower at the top than we'd normally expect. And the shoulders are then round masses that slide all over the place, up, down, forward, and back. Treating the shoulders as huge lumps sliding around the outside of the ribcage is good enough for most applications, so I could just stop there, but because anatomy gets me hot, I'm going to go into a little more detail about the structures. In particular, shoulders just look like round lumps, right? So why call them a girdle? Let's look at the bones involved. The arm is able to swing around freely because of a ball joint at the top of the humerus, but that's not the exciting part of the shoulder by any means. That ball is held against a socket, creating a solid resting place for all the arm muscles to press against, and the socket itself is then free-floating on top of the ribcage, held there only by muscles. This floating socket is what makes this joint so weird. The scapula, which sticks out from the socket, is like a handle giving the muscles of the back a way to tug at the shoulder. There are exactly 57 muscles that attach to the scapula. Actually, I just made that number up, but there are really a lot of muscles that grab onto it coming from all over the place, even from the front. And these muscles slide the scapula all over your back and even, and this is the cool part, rotate it. Now, if you're clever, you might be wondering why you would need to rotate a socket joint because, you know, like, the ball part of a ball and socket joint is already rotating. The problem here is that there's junk in the way that keeps the ball and socket from having a full range of motion, raising it straight up, for instance, or backwards. But if you rotate the scapula, you can move this junk out of the way. But that's just the back half of the girdle. The scapula would be a mushy mess if it didn't have something rigid to push against, which comes in the form of the clavicle, which I will blab about, along with why the shoulders are superior to the spine when expressing emotions in part two of Dax Plains, How to Draw Shoulders, coming up next. Thanks for watching Dax Plains, a how-to series where I, Dax, attempt to illustrate an illustration topic whether I know shit about it or not in a time shorter than my own attention span. And if this free video was useful to you, please go read my graphic novel, which is all online at failingsky.com, and which just received an Eisner nomination for the second time.